Are we filming? Yes, we are. So welcome, welcome to another, another video. And I'm going to take my glasses off because there's no scripts. There's not even any bullet points for this video. It's um, part of my philosophy series where I talk about stuff that uh, sometimes is very, very deep. Other times it's not so deep, but they're just my thoughts, unrehearsed. And this may, this video might be five minutes or it might be an hour. I think it's unlikely to be an hour, but um, I will start. I will keep going and hopefully I will come across as coherent and lucid and uh, um, let me know let me know your comments because it's your comments that I value most. Thank you in advance. I want to talk about the to-do list in its simplest form. And when I mean simplest form, here's a piece of paper. It's A4 and I folded it three times. And then this, so this is A7 and I've put it in this form through my hole punch rather than punch them individually I just do that and I can take this I can take this in my pocket I don't have to worry about anything breaking you know can't uh, uh, there's no there are no rings fun facts rings to worry about or p loose papers becoming detached from uh, uh, for instance, a disbound notebook, because sometimes that's what happens. Um, and it's very lightweight. It's very, very lightweight. But crucially here, I have got enough paper here, so long as I have a pen, to be able to jot down everything that I need to do, possibly for the next month, so long as I write small on one single sheet of A4. And I don't have to cut it. I can just, when I've, when I've finished one side, then I can fold it over, do another side, and I can keep going until every part of these eight sheets, if I cut them, are complete. And then I've got another eight sheets here. Now, if I'm clever about it, I will number them so that they are naturally form a chronological order in a binder. But that's not necessary all the time. Uh, it depends what you're going to do with it. But it has it has that that reality that is so associated with simplicity. And at the end of the day, we're all thinking about paper-based productivity from the basis of making it as simple as possible. I mean, there are, there are other things to consider as well, um, like making it look nice and uniform. And I do appreciate some people like to decorate their notes with illustrations. And that goes back, that goes back over a thousand years. You look at the Lindisfarne Gospels, it's not just someone jotting stuff down, they're taking care and consideration because it lends weight to the value of that particular prose or information to future readers. There is a, it, it adds gravity to what is being said almost as if the person who wrote it, the scribe, sitting at his wooden desk at Lindisfarne, was providing a deal to the future reader, saying, look, I'm making this really, really nice and pretty. I want you to enjoy that reading experience, but please listen to the word that's coming from my quill pen. Now that's a bit euphemistic from a point of view of 
a humble to-do list. But that humble to-do list may be something that you're going to go work through over over several days or several weeks, even several months. And apart from it being legible, the, the actual creation of the to-do list, its success in a small part depends on uh, it being convenient to create one, uh, pleasurable to do so, uh, legible when you're reading it, and also any other number of factors which you can put in a bag, shake it around and draw them out at random. This is the simplest form. And it doesn't even have to be posh paper, because as we know, um, it's it's quite it's quite uh, it's quite good value to use. I, I mean, this is just uh, copier paper, pr cheap printer paper. In fact, this is uh, actually it's not that cheap. It's uh, fifty GSM Clairefontaine bank paper, but it could be. It's it's fairly cheap compared to printed to do lists uh, that you buy twenty at a time in a pack from Filofax and it's like three fifty, four pounds and you know, th that that cost stacks up and that's they're all gonna be neat and tidy and there's a there's a nice flow to having inserts in your Filofax that conform to that sort of uh, that style. Um, the ritual of ticking off to do's as you do them cannot be denied but i would say this is the simplest form and it and and for me it works but i want to talk about i want to talk about to do lists in general terms this is just an example of many um particularly because this is effectively a7 uh other people use pocket size uh, a5, A4. I mean, I've I've got a project book up there that is A4, and I, I use that extensively for sort of business related stuff. Um, but I really like this A7 format. I can just put it in a pocket, and then ultimately this will go in a mini Filofax binder. It it just works. But what what I what do I how do I cope with this to do list, which can become quite unruly and lengthy. What do I do? How do I cope? How do I read and interpret and distinguish and sort when I've already added that thought or note onto the paper? And although sometimes it's therapeutic to rewrite it and, and reorder a list by rewriting it again, uh, they, that, that cannot be denied. I mean, it's a, it's a good concept, but it does use a lot of paper. What do I do? What am I doing at the moment? And and the reason why I say at the moment is because I chop and change. I chop and change all the time, partly because I I, I have the time to do it. I, I have the luxury of time because I'm retired, although I'm kind of semi-retired. I, 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 I still dabble in stuff, antiques largely. Um, but... I uh, I I'm sort of fairly time rich, and so I, I and I can experiment to the to you know to to uh, to my heart's desire, and I have been doing that over the last few years, and I have I have got several systems on the go, but I want to talk about one particular system that I really really like, particularly in this form where I am just potentially carrying a to-do list which consists of one piece of A4 paper folded three times so that it becomes a convenient size to fit in any pocket without even a binder. This could be the one thing I might carry. Reality In the reality I, I carry a, a typically I carry another binder which might be a this is a mini executive. Uh, I'm enjoying using that a lot at the moment. But I could, I could just have a single sheet of paper and I will be able to get things done. 
what I'm going to do is I just want I just want to show you or, or not well, am I going to show you I'm waffling here but I want to I want to describe because and I re really want to I, wa I want to keep this listenable it's not a podcast but I'm aware that some people will be listening to this in their car etc and so there, there's there's no real visual uh, interpretation required. I'm just a guy sitting here in the middle of the UK talking, holding up a sheet of A4 paper folded three times, hole punched from a mini size file effects. And there may be some anticlimax when I tell you what I'm doing with it and how efficient this system is for me. But I just want to share it with you anyway because. If there's just one person out there for who for whom there, uh, there is a benefit, then then that's good. Um, I write things down frequently. Uh, they may be ideas long term or short term. There may be things I've got to do almost immediately within the hour. Other things may be what might be considered suitable for a Sunday maybe list. So it varies, it varies. And as you know, I, although I have dabbled in GTD before now, I, I, I'm not a GTD disciple anymore. Uh, I tend to do my own thing and, and take the best of what is out there and, 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 and modify it, modify their systems to my needs. So what, um, what on earth am I banging on about? Well, I'll tell you what it is. I want you to imagine that I have got on this sheet of paper, I've got 20 things written down and that's typical. I'm looking at my to-do list in here, which is effectively one of these in here. Uh, and there's about 20 today, 20 things I've got to do. I know I'm not going to do all those 20 things. I know that there's a good chance I could get maybe nine or 10, 15 done, who knows, but I'm not gonna get everything done. But they're written down in a in the in the order in which I think of them. I'm not thinking, well, this is going to be what Mondays, Tuesday, Wednesday, to, you know, the next eight days. I mean, I could do that, but I am finding that particularly at the moment, and I'm experimenting and enjoying just being able to write them down without any date. If there's a date specific item, then it goes in my diary simple as everything else is on a sheet of paper where my remit is to get these things done as quickly as humanly possible within reason without sapping my strength without injuring myself without inconveniencing other people as fast as possible but with that flexibility for instance, today I was supposed to be getting something done and I got a call for assistance to help someone out. Uh, I was their bodyguard for the morning, uh, helping them transport a large amount of cash, not drugs, houses. <laughs> um, so, uh, it, it, you know, uh, it's, a, it's a flexible life we lead sometimes certainly for me it's a flexible thing um so i've got these t i digress let me get back to the 20 things so i've got 20 things written on this paper in the order written in the order that i have thought of them but that's not the order i'm going to do them so how do i process the information now, it's been a bit of a revelation to me, and it started with a suggestion from a channel member several weeks ago, many weeks ago, and they suggested that I might like to try one of these. And for those listening, I am holding up a BIC 4 pen. I think that's how you describe it. It's basically a ubiquitous French-made pen made by Bic, very famous. I think they invented the biro. Uh, and it's got four, four biros inside. And you can hear me clicking 
So red, black, green, blue. And that fits in my, miraculously, it fits in my mini file effects. But if I want to just have this, a pen and some paper, then this is my system that I carry. It is an absolute minimum. I always have some way of writing and somewhere where I can write things down. So this, this is the absolute minimalist EDC everyday carry that works for my version of paper-based productivity. It is, even though it's as basic as this, it is a complete system because it allows me to record a task that I must complete. It allows me to process, and I'll get onto that in a moment, process those tasks in the order that I decide and it allows me to mark those lists as completed. But there is a thing that I'm doing with this pen that I've not done before. And I don't know why I haven't done it before, but we're learning. You know, I am in my 60s and I've, and I've been making lists for at least half a century. And I've, this is the first time that I've actually done what I'm about to point out to you, if you haven't guessed already. Um, and I'm embracing that. And it's not the only system I'm trying. I tend to chop and change, but I'm really, really liking this system because of the simplicity of it. Not just because it's, uh, it doesn't, doesn't just work with a single sheet of A4 like this but it would work with other more comprehensive, complex systems as well that are paper-based. And it's the red pen. The red pen. I will, I will jot down, I will jot down things and I will first of all use the black pen and write something down and then I will change every time I write a new thing down I will change the pen I mean it's these are fundamental things that a primary school child might be expected to to do concepts but I've never really thought about using color to differentiate between tasks so I want you to imagine that I write I use the black pen for the first task and then instead of, instead of compartmentalizing that task by drawing a line or a special box I will change to a blue pen for the next one and a green for the next one and then I will change to a black pen I never use the red pen so when you look down the list from a point of view of the perception of and the ability to distinguish between tasks, it's much easier through the use of colour. And it's an ad hoc system. I don't have a system where I think, well, right, blue is for medical appointments and green is for something to do with the house and black is for family. I'm not that sophisticated. I'm just getting it down on paper. But the only thing I do is I flick to another pen biro colour if you like uh, when I start another so I can easily see that one task is separate from the task above purely through the use of colour and then what I do is periodically throughout the day when I have a coffee I was going to say when I have a smoke I used to smoke about 20 years ago I used to smoke and smoking was an enjoyable thing and no doubt I'm, I can't remember that far back, but I would have used that time having a cigarette to look at my to-do list. I'm sure I check my diary, etc. Um, but for me now, coffee is my my vice. <laughs> it's my only vice in life. And we've all got to have a vice in life. Mine is coffee. An occasional cup of tea too. Um, but what I will do is I will... I'm just going to draw it 
And for those of you who, for those of you who are, um, let me, I'm just going to put my glasses on. I should, I, I really, I knew that taking my glasses off was, was wrong. Uh, but I'm putting them back on. And so what I'm doing is, imagine there's a load of tasks there. So I have written the words task one. And there is a big red dot there. Uh, and the the red is symbolises a sense of urgency. This is a task that I've really got to address right now. And what I do is when I'm having my coffee and I'm going through, imagine there's 20 tasks on this piece of paper, and I look at them and I decide which of the three tasks, I mean, it's a, it's an arbitrary number. It could be five, could be eight, could be one. I take three tasks and then I I can't do more than three tasks at once. I mean, for me, I'm not that good at multitasking. Three is about my limit. And I, and I decide, right, those are the three tasks that I am going to do over the next 30 minutes, hour, afternoon, whatever it takes. And I will ignore those. I won't rearrange them. I won't draw up, draw up a list. But the fact that I've only got, I've chosen three things, I don't need to reorder that list because it's very, very easy to see on the page the three tasks that I have highlighted and illuminated with that big red dot. And when I've done that task, I do something else. So watch this space. I've only got one camera set up at the moment, so I'm just filling in the red dot. And now it's a black dot, or actually it's a blue dot, but it should be black. So the red, so, so I've effectively written over the top of that big red dot, so it disappears. It's no longer red. It's no longer symbolic of a sense of urgency. It's now got a blue or black colour symbolising that that task is completed. And then when I have another coffee, maybe an hour's time, hopefully by that time there are no red dots. If there are no red dots, then I can decide, right, I'm going to do three more. And I continue rinsing and repeating, adding to this list, because obviously a list at the end of the day may still have outstanding tasks, but you're adding to those tasks all the time. And what I try and do is have no fewer than, so no more than, say, 20 tasks on the go or on my for my consideration on my list or my sheet of paper at any one time. If there's more than that, then I then I think, well, maybe I shouldn't really be thinking of that at the moment. I'll put it in my diary instead. Uh, I tend to handle Sunday maybe tasks uh, in diary format. So I say to myself arbitrarily, well, I don't really want to think about that for a fortnight. So I then enter it in my diary in a fortnight's time. And then that way I haven't forgotten about it. And the timing of that consideration for that task is precisely controlled simply by using my diary, my paper-based diary. But having, I should call this system, not that I really need to call it anything because it is so simple, but I, I call it my three-dot system. Pick three tasks off your to-do list, highlight them in red with the aid of coffee. That's good for, that works for me, but it might be a cigarette. It might be, might be some other pause in your busy life so that you can review and strategize what you're going to do in the next half hour, in the next hour, the next afternoon. Who knows? It's your call. You decide how you're going to do this. No one else. It's your decision. But for me, and hopefully this helps at least one, maybe more of you, I call it my three-dot system. Three red dots, no more, and just focus on those three, having selected them from a larger list, maybe 10, 15, 20 items, and then you do them without any thoughts 
drifting towards other things you've got to do. You decide everything. Everything is down to you in terms of strategizing your to-do list. And I nearly said weaponizing, <laughs> strategizing. But my three-dot system uh, works for me. And it's, it's probably not unique. Uh, lots of other people have very, very similar systems. But I, I, for me, with my, the way I think, I, I tend to be, I tend to be very, very focused and drill down into some deep thinking. And so for me, the absolute limit the absolute limit, I'm, I'm going to put this down because it's waving around. Um, the absolute limit of my cognitive ability, in at least in terms of being able to think deeply about a particular task, is the golden number. The golden number for me is the magic number is three. And so using this pen, which I've not actually considered before i'm not i'm not really one for different colors but i'll tell you what i'll tell you what this to me even though it's a cheap pen that only cost me i don't know i don't even know how much it was i i, I think it was about one pound something i've got some more i've got some more ordered because this this pen i'll probably end up um I don't know. I'm, I, I don't know whether you can you can have fond affection to a fountain pen. I mean, I, I've got a fountain pen that was given to me by my grandfather around about fifty years ago, somewhere in the house. I can't find it at the moment, which which I find irksome. I need to find it, uh, but I haven't seen it for a few, for a few years. But I have fond affection for that pen that I used all the way through my schooling and through my exams etc and my grandfather is no longer with me but I have a sentimental attachment to that pen other people's mileage will vary um, and we're only talking about something that costs a pound and it is a mass-produced plastic big pen but I'll tell you what I'll tell you what I thank that channel member who put the seed of thought in my mind about using a Bic multi-pen because, because for me, this has absolutely been a revelation. Thank you for watching. Till my next video. Goodbye.